It is your financial coach, Donna, and I want to welcome you back to Growing My Wealth with Donna, a place where we are changing our mindset about money and increasing our wealth. You know, I always like to start my video with a question. So today's question is, are you considering paying for your child's college education? If so, do you have a solid college savings plan? As the cost of education skyrockets, it is imperative to have a savings plan for your child's college education in place. I want to say up front that I'm not saying you have to pay for your child's education. Paying for your child's college education is your choice. Today, I will share three types of savings accounts or plans for private school and college. The first college savings account is the Coverdale Education Savings Account, ESA, which is a tax-deferred trust account created by the United States government to assist families in funding educational expenses for beneficiaries who must be 18 years old or younger when the account is established. The age restriction may be waived for special needs beneficiaries. The Coverdale Education Savings Account can be used to cover qualified educational expenses such as tuition, books, supplies, and other name expenses for kindergarten through grade 12 and post-secondary educational institutions such as colleges or universities that participate in the student aid programs administered by the U.S. Department of Education. However, the fund must be used by the time the recipient is age 30 or taxes, fees, and penalties may apply when you withdraw the funds. Also, any unused portion may be rolled over to another eligible family member under the age of 30. If the money remains in the ESA when the child turns 30, the ESA will be distributed and taxable to the recipient. With the Education Savings Plan, you will not receive a tax deduction for the money you deposit into the account. However, the money does grow tax-free. You will pay no taxes on distributions if used for qualified educational expenses. You can only contribute $2,000 per year per child. Lastly, there are income restrictions for contributions. You cannot contribute to an ESA if you make more than $110,000 if filing single or $220,000 if married filing jointly. Now, if you do not meet the income limits for an ESA and you want to contribute more to your child's college education, then the 529 could be a good option for you. A 529 plan is a tax advantage savings plan which was originally for post-secondary education cost. In 2017, the 529 plan was expanded to cover kindergarten through 12th grade educational expenses and the 529 covered apprenticeship programs in 2019. The two types of 529 plans are the college savings plan and the prepaid tuition plan. Both plans grow tax deferred and withdrawals are tax free if used for qualified education expenses such as tuition, books, fees, and more. Any other types of withdrawals are subject to taxes and a 10% penalty. Most of the time, there are no income limits or restriction on age. Also, you can transfer the beneficiary to another child or another qualified recipient, such as a niece or nephew, if your child decides not to attend college. In addition, 529 plans become more conservative, conservative as the beneficiary gets closer to college age. There is also a contribution limit dependent on the state. It ranges between $100,000 to $300,000 total. Now, let's talk about the difference between the two 529 plans. The college savings plan is the most common one. With the college savings plan, the account holder and grandparents and any other third party can contribute to the plan invested in a variety of mutual funds. Depending on how the fund performs will determine how the account grows or shrinks. The prepaid tuition plan allows the account holder, usually a parent, guardian, or grandparent, to pay in advance for tuition at a designated colleges and universities, locking in the cost at today's rates. In other words, the account holder is basically lending their money to the state's 529 plan in return for a locked-in tuition rate. You can make contributions in, a regular in, in regular installments or in a lump sum. 
This plan is available in a limited number of states and some higher education institutions. The money grows in value over time and eventually comes out of the account to pay tuition that is not taxable. The prepaid tuition does not cover room and board like the college savings plan. The third savings plan used to save for college is the custodial account. There are two custodial accounts, the Uniform Transfers to Minor Act and the Uniform Gifts to Minors Act. They are different than the education savings account and the 529. The custodial accounts, the account is in the child's name but controlled by a custodian such as a parent or a grandparent. The custodian manages the account until the child reaches the legal age for that state, typically 18 or 21. The minor is shielded from tax consequences on the gifts up to a particular value. Now the assets will be counted as part of the custodian's taxable estate until the minor takes possession. However, withdrawals from the custodial account do not have any penalties as long as the funds are used for the child's benefit, not limited to educational expenses. Custodial accounts have no annual contribution limits or household income restrictions, but the account's beneficiary cannot be changed. The most important thing to remember about a custodial account is that once the child reaches the legal age, they can use the funds for college or for anything of their choice. So be careful when you use this type of account to save for college. Today, I have talked about three types of college savings plans. Now, you must determine which one is best for you. I recommend saving for college, but keep in mind that it may affect your child's eligibility for financial aid and scholarships. Now with the ESA and the 529 plan, you can change the beneficiary, but you cannot change the beneficiary with the custodial accounts. Also, I recommend that your child applies for scholarships, take advanced placement classes if possible, and get a job so they can add work experience to their resume. Before closing, I also want to remind you that many financial experts recommend that you pay off your debt, have an emergency fund of three to six months to cover unexpected costs, and put 15% of your income towards a retirement savings plan before paying for your child's college education. But as I stated earlier, it is your choice to save for your child's college education, but make sure you are also preparing for your life after retirement. As always, Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment, click like, share, and subscribe below. Have a wonderful day.